Number five, Vaseline. If you're using Vaseline on just your skin, you're missing out. The creator had some different ideas. He wanted people to eat it. Vaseline has a weird history. It came into the world when some oil workers were scrubbing a weird gooey residue off of their drills and thought to themselves, what if we rub this stuff all over our bodies? A man named Robert Chesbro saw them doing it and figured they were onto something. Soon he was traveling around the country burning his skin with acid and rubbing the wound with petroleum jelly before a delighted crowd. Chesbro didn't stop there. He insisted that eating a spoonful of Vaseline each day would ensure health, long life, and vitality. All modern science suggests that's insane and that eating Vaseline is actually terrible for you. But to be fair, Chesbro lived to be 96 years old. Number four, cornflakes. Before they made cereal, John and Will Kellogg owned a sanitarium. Major celebrities from around the U.S. would visit the Kelloggs and let the brothers purify their bodies. The brothers, though, were strict Seventh-day Adventists, and they had some unusual ideas about how to purify their clients. John believed that all sex was impure and harmful, including sex between a man and his wife. John and his wife never had sex and even slept in separate bedrooms to keep the temptation at bay. The worst sin of all, John believed, was masturbation, which he called oneanism. He specifically designed cornflakes to be the least sexy food possible, devoid of the sugars and spices he believed drove men into lust-filled frenzies. He fed it to his patients, believing that the bland taste would quell their sex drives. He tried to sell it as a breakfast cereal too, hoping to make a generation of kids all around the world bored of sex. Hardly anyone bought his abstinence flakes, though, until his brother Will bought him out and added sugar, a sex craze inducing ingredient which infuriated John so much that he sued. Number three, bubble wrap. Bubble wrap was never supposed to be relegated to mail packaging. It was supposed to be a high class home accessory. When it was invented in 1957, it was intended as 3D wallpaper. Alfred W. Fielding and Mark Chavanez sealed two shower curtains together, which allowed air bubbles to remain between them and tried to sell them to wealthy people as soft, cushiony papering for their walls. Nobody bought it. Americans didn't want walls made out of bubble wrap, so Fielding and Chavanez tried to sell it as greenhouse installation instead. It took until the 1960s before bubble wrap finally found its purpose in packing boxes. Number two, Coca-Cola. Before it was the world's most popular soft drink, Coca-Cola was a medication developed by John Pemberton, a pharmacist and soldier who was wounded in the Civil War. Pemberton's wound led to a heavy morphine addiction with which he constantly struggled. He had a breakthrough when he heard about a bold new medication people were using to wean themselves off opiates, wine mixed with cocaine. Pemberton tried to make his own wine cocaine mix when a lab assistant accidentally added some carbonated water to the drink. He tasted it and realized he had a hit on his hand. For some reason, everyone who tasted his concoction of carbonated wine and cocaine just wanted more. Pemberton sold his drink and advertised it as a cure for almost everything, including being a most wonderful invigorator of sexual organs. Changing government regulations eventually forced Pemberton to filter the wine and cocaine out. But today, if you ever see a man with a bottle of wine in one hand, a can of Coke in the other, and a rolled up dollar bill up his nose, you're seeing a man enjoying the fresh taste of Coca-Cola the way it was intended. Number one, Lysol. Lysol was once used for something entirely different than cleaning counters. When the company started, Lysol ads showed smiling women declaring, I use Lysol always for douching. It gets weirder. Douching was just a euphemism. These women were using Lysol as a form of birth control. Now, Lysol wouldn't directly tell women that it would keep them from getting pregnant, but they made it pretty clear. They posted ads that warned women of intimate neglect. They would spread stories with titles like, How I Lost My Husband, that showed a woman saying that when her husband cheated, she was really to blame. It didn't work particularly well. Lysol wasn't an effective contraceptive, and it actually killed people. By 1911, women spraying Lysol on themselves had already led to 193 reported cases of Lysol poisoning and five deaths. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please let me know by clicking the like button and do share, write a comment, and don't forget to subscribe so that you can catch up with my next video.